Um, so my name, once again, is Marie Chatfield. I graduated last May from Rice University, and I am now a software engineer at Square. So I have been a uh, full-time web developer for about seven months now, counted last night. Uh, and there have been many times over the past three or four years, uh, even as recently as four months ago, that I have sat there silently wondering myself, do I even know how to web? Um, so could I just have a show of hands if any of you have also wondered that question, like what even is the web and do I know how it works? Okay, thank you for sharing, because it's kind of like imposter syndrome -y, right? So the goal is that over the next 15 minutes, um, at the end of this, every single one of you can confidently say, yeah, I do know how to web, and this is how it works. So let's get started. So most of the time when we're talking about web development, we can think of it being split into two sides. You have the client side, which is what your users are interacting with. So this might be websites, it could be mobile applications, but that's sort of what you normally think of as where the web is when people are going to it. So that's client side. You can also have server side. Uh, this is so a server is really just a fancy word for an application or a process that is running on some physical machine somewhere in the world. And so clients connect to servers over the internet or some other protocol um, and submit requests for some sort of content. And then the server, based on what that request is, serves back content to the clients. Okay, so servers serve contents to clients, clients send requests to servers. So, in the next 45 seconds, I would like you to grab a partner and each of you define to each other what is a client and what is a server. Ready, set, go. Okay, 10 second warning. Perfect, okay, hopefully you all had a chance to define something. So, servers can serve back different types of contents to clients. Uh, one type of content they might serve back is static assets. When we mean static assets, what we essentially are saying is content that doesn't change based on the user. So a lot of times this is HTML, JavaScript, CSS. Uh, so to clarify what I mean by it doesn't change, let's imagine that we all open our browsers right now and go to Twitter. We're gonna see essentially the same website styled by the same CSS, uh, and when we click around on buttons, it's gonna be the same JavaScript that's running, even though we're seeing different tweets because we're different people. But the actual files that are being loaded to run that website are the same, and that's static assets. Um, one thing that's interesting you might notice, if you go to that website and you don't have internet, it's totally blank, like there's nothing there, and that's because all of the static assets uh, that you need to actually see that website live on a server somewhere, and if your client can't access that server, it's like totally blank. Um, so we specifically, a lot of times, call serving that static assets hosting. So you might say that like, oh, this website is hosted somewhere. That's because all the static assets for that site live on that server wherever it's hosted. Um, conversely, if you think about like a mobile app, when you download it from the App Store or the Google Play Store, it takes time and some data to download, and that's because it's actually downloading all of those static assets that you need for the app. Um, at the time that you're downloading. So even if you use that app and there's no internet, you see something that might not be interesting because there's no data, but you do actually have those static assets that are stored on your phone storage, and it's not required to go to a server to get them to show you anything. So uh, one last thing is that we do have something, uh, you might hear CDN or Content Delivery Network. All that's saying is it's a really fancy type of server that is very heavily optimized to serve static assets really quickly no matter where you are in the world so that your website loads as quickly as possible. It's not serving back any data, it's just the static assets. So grab a partner, same one and different, and please each one of you just define one of these terms on the screen in the next 30 seconds and go.
Okay, hopefully you each got a chance to define something, but we are moving on. So, as opposed to static assets, which don't change, your server can also serve back dynamic content, uh, what you might normally think of as data. Uh, so specifically, your server can go and query a database. Now, what do those words mean? A database literally is just some sort of organized collection of data. Uh, one of the most common ways that you organize the data is you'll hear it being referred to as a relational database. Um, the way that you think about this is essentially it's tables, which represent types of objects. Those tables have columns, uh, which you can think of as sort of like attributes of objects, and each row is an instance of that object. So for example, if we wanted to represent everybody that's here in this room, we could have an attendees table. Maybe those columns might be first name, last name, the school that you're from, and then each of us would have a row in that table that sort of represents our data. And so when your server is querying a database, um, it's essentially just looking for a subset of that data, um, maybe from a couple different tables, maybe just from one, a lot of times based on the particular uh, values that are in those columns. So that's why we all see different tweets when we go to Twitter, is because even though all of our tweets are coming from the same table, it's using a query to identify specifically the tweets that we should see um, based on some sort of unique value. So, Please, with your partners, one person define database and the other define query. Go. Okay, we are moving on again. So you might be wondering, where do I fit into all of this if I wanna work on these things? So if you're working on the client side, so websites or mobile, you are probably a front-end developer. That's sort of like the front of the web that people are interacting with. If you're working on the server, you are probably a back-end developer because you're sort of dealing with like the back of the web that users are not interacting with directly. Uh, if you work on both of those things together, you're probably a full stack developer because you work across that. And then specifically, if you work on the machines that the server is running on, you are a systems administrator. Uh, that's a little bit separate from a software engineer normally, but it is related because it is all running things. So if you could please, with your partner, define just one of these words. Ready, set, go. Okay, last round of definitions. What in the world is the cloud? It's a great question. Okay, so you know how we mentioned that system administrator works on the like, physical machines that servers are running on? That's kind of a really hard thing to do, and it's very expensive. You have to worry about the machines always having electricity, always having internet. They always have to be able to handle however many requests that you're throwing at the machines really gracefully. If all of a sudden overnight your app becomes largely successful and you start getting hundreds of millions of requests coming into your servers, you are suddenly working at scale. Uh, and if you don't have enough physical machines, your entire app will crash and you'll end up with some like weird error and everybody will be like, ah, oh, this is terrible, I can't actually use this. So in order to avoid that, a lot of times you might ask, uh, use some cloud services, which is basically a business or a tool that said, we will have the machines, they're still going to exist, but we'll run them, we'll give them internet, we'll give them power, we'll even employ the sysadmins who are going to make sure that they're always running very well. Uh, you can just sort of send all of your requests to like the cloud and the internet in the sky and just not have to worry about the machines. You're probably still going to want your backend developers to be writing a server that you can host, uh, essentially like renting space on the cloud, um, but you don't actually have to worry about the machines. So, with your partners, please try to define these two buzzwords at scale and the cloud.
Okay, thank you again for your time. I hope that that actually maybe helped you understand a little bit more about how to even web. If it did, please let me know on Twitter. If it didn't, please even more so let me know. If I got something wrong, I'm always trying to improve. I am always still learning. Um, and finally, if you're interested in learning more about web development and what that looks like and you're still an undergrad, Square has an awesome program called Code Camp. I know that we have some Code Campers here. Um, if that sounds like something that you want to do to sort of see what web development looks like um, for a week or so, all expenses paid, check out Join Square on Twitter or email our wonderful campus recruiter, Saki, at saki at squareup.com. Thank you again for your time and enjoy the rest of the conference.